It's been 11 long years since we last got to see any sort of college football game ever released. And with it finally in our hands, us longtime fans can finally jump back onto the gridiron and listen to our favorite fight song like we did back in the old days. Since the release of College Football 2025, there has been some really good reception of the game while also some stark criticism. I was able to play the game before its official release and by the end of the video I will give you my opinion on whether this re-emergence of a college football game is worth the full price or if it's just a Madden club. Do we finally have a perfect formula for a football game for the future? What are the major flaws of EA's venture back into college football? Let's screw up trying to make a tackle, win the Heisman Trophy, and jump right into this. And by far the best additions or maybe better wording would be revivals from the past would be the dynasty mode and for those of you who have never played the classic game this was essentially a season mode similar to what we see in the mainline madden game but for those of you that are cultured like me this was always better than the old madden bullshit in dynasty mode you get to create your own coach and select which program you're hired at you could either be a coordinator or the head honcho controlling both sides of the ball now with this opportunity i saw the re-emergence of beef wellington and his epitome of manliness now as a guiding coach for the future of our youth Based on which program and level coach you are, you do get some benefits and drawbacks. If you decide that you're going to become a coach of a higher level program like Alabama or Michigan, yes, you will have an easier time recruiting athletes from all over the country and probably get caught doing a cheating scandal. But at the same time, those programs that are usually successful require you to be at the top level of the competition which puts you more in a hot seat if you suck ass as a coach and don't make it to the national title. Just like being in the limelight, the fall can be much higher or reap the better rewards. If you pick a smaller program, you do have a tough time recruiting five or four star recruit, but if you do well as a coach, the benefits in either getting national recognition or being re-signed are higher. And of course, it's a much harder challenge. Sure, any jabroni can go with Michigan and just recruit the best players and dominate their conference, but it takes a real man like Beef Wellington to go into the pits of New York and take Syracuse to the national championship. One of the best and sought after aspects of the dynasty mode that most fans are creaming their pants over was the fact that recruiting was officially back. Back in the day, it was a near science to be a perfect recruiter. You had to divvy up how much time and effort you had to put into your recruiting and at times it could be overwhelming. I remember vehemently that between me and my brother we had to do mathematical equations over how much we wanted to prioritize certain athletes because it could drastically hurt our chances to land a five-star recruit. But at the same time if you took recruiting seriously you became a master recruiter and would land legit pros into your program that felt so rewarding seeing them dominate in the regular season. You became attached to seeing your recruits become absolute G's. I remember I had recruited a middle linebacker that was so damn good that he started the season with an overall 83 rating and became a Heisman winner by his sophomore year. I miss you, Corey Battle. <coughs> well, well, anyway, recruiting in this game does take some notes from the classic title, but at the same time, they make it way easier to manage. Instead of putting exact value of time points towards specific recruit, you just have to pick how many hours you're willing to put each week to complete actions like searching them on social media or reaching out to their family for a visit or just paying players to sign with the program up, up to, I mean, posing for a photo. But either way, it became simpler and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And don't get me wrong, for people who are super into recruiting, they may get pissed that it's super dumbed down, which is understandable. But at the same time, it's still a solid system on its own. I think Dynasty Mode has clearly shown that they are influenced from the original system which is exactly what we wanted, providing coaching traits that give your teams perks and changes the way you run your squad. Players possibly transferring if their goals are not met, any of your coaching carousel, I mean, it's all great stuff. I love the system as is, and my hope is that in the future they can always expand on it or refine it for the next installments. And by far, one of the biggest fears I had before the game was released was whether this game would feel like a Madden game, which is like crap, or be closer to the original NCAA game. And I'm happy to say that we are closer to the classic titles than anything we see in Madden, on the offensive side at least. I will get into the criticisms later on, but for the time being, the gameplay is like crisp, smooth butter. They add it in a revamped passing system, which does get some fans annoyed since it's a lot easier compared to the past. It highly depends on the oomph you put into your throw 
that changes how it gets to the player. Lob passes have less power, arc passes are in between, and both throws are obviously like your one for all throwing this to the next dimension. The difference between this system and the old method was a lot less button combos you need to know. Now, a lot of times in the older Madden games, they expect you to hit a button to throw it to your receiver, then hit another button to tell the receiver how they should catch the ball, then direct which area of the body they should catch it, then you hit another button to do smelling salts. I mean, yeah, seems like a lot, but most fans were used to it. But with this change, I honestly think it's a lot easier and more efficient because it's simple. But I think the most important aspect of the gameplay that I love the most is the movement and feel of being a ball carrier. Back in the old days of NCAA 14, fans loved the fact that most cuts made were just moving the analog stick would feel very similar to the actual real life games and how it looks. Now at times the older games were a little unrealistic with dudes making full 90 degree cuts at the drop of a hat, but if you were to compare this to the Madden games, which made our dudes feel like they were 800 pound guys with arthritis, it was way better. So with the modern college football game, it was more of an updated version of the older classic titles, which is nearly perfect. Juke moves are deadly, and when you hit someone with a spin move, it literally would send them into the next dimension how bad their ankles were broken. I think when looking at any sort of sports game, the biggest deal breaker for most fans is whether the game is fun to play. And all around, I felt the overall gameplay is excellent in the play-by-play, -play, the coaching adjustments, and everything in between is exactly what we want to see in a football game. I remember back in the day, whether it was playing Dynasty, Road to Glory, or even the greedy ass Ultimate Team, the game just feels excellent, and you have to give devs their love for bringing what we love from the old games to the modern era. And lastly, the overall feel of the game is exactly what fans of the college football franchise have wanted for the last decade. One of the biggest things I noticed in all the media presentations of this game that gave me a lot of hope was the overall presentation that the devs were trying to show and give some sort of a dedication to what the fans wanted all along, with the showcasing of the stadiums, the traditions, and the overall atmosphere of college football. And from the trailers to the actual release of the game, they absolutely nailed every aspect of its presentation. It feels like the classic era title and honestly was caught off guard with how good it looked and just glad that it wasn't a meta game with a college football paint job. You can tell that the devs looked to the past and tried to include all the old models and aspects that fans wanted to be brought back. Whether it was the way the stadium looks, the impacts of the fans on the away team, and even coaching traits impacting the overall ratings of the players. This gives you the best overall feel of any college football game I've ever played. Like even navigating the main menu gave me the feels. Getting the constant drumline tracks throughout the menus, always paying homage to the colleges we were playing in the game. The only thing I wish they added were the fight songs of the different program. That would have been the ultimate best thing they could have done, but it's still cool either way. It's way better than what we had in Madden. I mean, the music tracks they gave you in the last Madden game made me feel like I was getting my ears blown out trying to navigate the menu. I mean, damn, I miss the old days when music of the main menu was just good. They should just revert our soundtracks to the old NFL Street games and at least we could salvage what, what the hell we got in Madden. But for College Football 25, they hit the style points at the highest level, and for a longtime fan like myself, it does not go unnoticed. As much as I love watching the NFL, there was always a unique feel of college football, and it's clear and present with this recent installment. They give the fans exactly what they want in the gameplay, feel, and what you can do in the game. What do you like most about College Football 2025? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the video so far. Now, even though this game has so many great things they've done in bringing back the classic franchise with the good, let's talk about the bad. As much as the gameplay of this game is fantastic, there are some aspects of the gameplay that need some major adjustments. I mentioned previously that for offensive players, the game is legendary and reminds me of the past. Well, for defenders, this game feels like trash. I don't know why, but it feels like whenever I play defense, whether I'm a defensive tackle, a linebacker, or secondary, my dude feels like he runs with two broken ankles and heavily constipated. Like, my guy feels robotic, and anytime I need to take an angle to make a tackle or need to cut back, close down a gap, my dude has an instant heart attack and is frozen in time. And don't get me started on the diving mechanic. Now, I know in reality, no dude is able to launch themselves like they're playing NFL Blitz, but it feels like pressing the dive button is an automatic make yourself look like a complete dip shit missing a tackle. There's a better chance you running headfirst into a ball carrier or diving in the path of the play and hoping they just trip over your limp body than actually making a tackle off a dive. I've never seen a game take tackling and make it one of the worst versions I've ever played. And I know that in video games, playing defense is always harder, but I noticed after like my 50th game that it wasn't just fun playing offense or 
being able to do so many crazy plays and moves on the offensive side of the ball that allowed us to score so much it's because defensive players move like a collective group of robots which sticks up their asses that force them to be unable to tackle us. I think if they make some sort of adjustment to the speed or the mechanics of tackling, it would go a long way to adjust the game, which allows both sides of the ball to feel really fun. Even the new additions like wear and tear can be overblown. I love the idea, don't get me wrong, where over the course of the game, a player can be overused or tackled in a certain way that can wear down the athletes, causing them to take more breaks or sub out more often. And in some cases, they get a higher chance of being injured because they're used too much. And it's a very cool concept to include in this overall strategy of the game. But it also feels super overblown. There were times where I would make sure to take a timeout to give my guys some extra rest to make sure that they were energized heading to the next set of plays. And legit, so many players were still impact. And I know in reality, just one timeout doesn't change everything, but even when the quarter ends, there were times it didn't even help my players get back in the neutral. And it wasn't just me. There were a lot of gamers out there that did not like the over-the-top impact that this has on the game. This is sort of a caveat of most games that need to make adjustments, so I'm not surprised since this is a new system. But I think this would go a long way in the right direction if they made adjustments to it. One of the other returns that got me really excited was the Road to Glory mode. And back in the day, this mode was made to give you the chance to play as a new college athlete athlete at any position and go through the college process of signing to a school, going through the day as a college athlete, do some day drinking, trying to increase your cake stand time. I mean, that works. And as you progress through your college career, your goal was to win titles and get the Heisman Trophy. Now, unfortunately for this year, the mode has some big problems that caused me major heartburn. Not only being unable to play in high school first, which all the old Road to Glory modes had, you go at right as a recruit out of high school. When you're selecting your position and level recruit you are, it feels like there are major flaws in this system. I'll give you an example. At the start of the mode, you get to pick if you're a five star to a one star recruit. Basically, this gives you some base skill levels and you either have to grind to get your player better or they have you ready as a top tier player ready to start on day one. So far, so good. But when selecting a team to play, it has major implications of issues that you could have. In my road to glory, I was playing as Mars Manor. I chose to be a four-star quarterback that would be a field general similar to Peyton Manning, but with the ability to actually navigate the pocket. Now, even though my base stats had me being around a 78 overall, there was a good amount of teams that were interested. And there are teams that show solid interest, whether you are a sure starter or even in a competitive battle for the starting job. Now, I personally did not pick a top rated school, but I picked a solid school where there could be a competition between me and the veteran quarterback, or so I thought. But when I arrived, I was instantly placed as the backup with absolutely zero chance of actually winning the starting job even though me and the current starter are the same rating. There is no preseason. There is no training camps where I could build up my ratings and possibly compete for the starting job. They just decided, Mars, we love your work ethic. We are really interested in signing you with us. But you're basically benched day one for no real chance to compete. So my entire freshman year was me going to practice, studying for my exams, and selling myself to local stores being in commercials. That's it. I did not start a single game throughout my entire time, even though all my training I did got me even a higher rating than the starter who was a senior. And after playing my first season, I sort of realized the major flaws of the system. Firstly, when picking the level of recruit you are, it would make so much more sense to give rewards and drawbacks to picking each tier. I mean, why in God's name would you ever pick a one-star recruit and play with no skills and only get a chance to play for lower level programs with little to no chance of actually starting until year two. Why not give rewards like a higher chance of earning XP for lower star recruits because it gives them that underdog mentality where higher level recruits should have a harder time leveling up since they are already a higher level. But everything I saw, there is literally no difference other than just starting at a higher overall rating. Secondly, the lack of positions to choose from does hurt the overall experience. You could only pick a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, middle linebacker, and cornerback positions, which is honestly just sad. We can't even play as a defensive lineman and try to become a sack machine in college? I mean, it is considered one of the most important position sets in all of football, especially in a league that relies heavily on passing. And by missing out on the easy dub, it narrows down the way to play and actually diminishes the game mode of what it used to be where you can literally play as any position you wanted and actually go through the whole simulation. I think the biggest reason why they did this was because the drills they made were limited to these specific positions. And lastly, the methods of practice and skill mini games are great, but there are some that suck so much ass 
that don't have any sort of variability of rewards. For quarterbacks, there are some skill mini games where you're put at a major disadvantage, like moving targets that make it immensely harder to get gold, which rewards you XP. But did you know that these XP points that we earn in much harder game modes are actually the same level as the XP gains for the much easier versions? That's just dumb. I think we can see much better aspects of this mode where you can earn XP and actually level up more efficiently and actually have a chance to earn a starting job in times where there should be a competition for the starting job. It's just a missed opportunity. And lastly, I'll make this quick. Ultimate Team is back. And it's greedier than ever. And I can make a whole video on my hatred for this game mode because of its horrific practices. But I need a large alcoholic beverage to keep calm when talking about it. I remember back in the day when the Ultimate Team was first introduced in FIFA 09. I actually loved the idea behind it. Taking every player that ever played the game and creating an Ultimate Team of these legends. Then when they brought it to the college football setting, I was like, damn, this is going to be even better. Now there were some money grubbing practices back then, but a lot lighter on the wallet. And they actually gave you a chance to earn higher level cards without having to spend an immense amount of cash to actually get some decent players. Since then though, the game mode has only gotten worse Worse, and these practices have been approved by General Greed himself. And it's crazy to say this, but if you take a fun mode like Ultimate Team and make it even worse with the money grubbing practices compared to even Madden titles, then you know you fucked it up. And somehow there are content creators that are absolutely in love with Ultimate Team and glorify the mode, which is just sickening. Go touch some grass. You need at least 1500 coins to buy a card to get a player that's worth 75 overall rating and below. You have to do an entire challenge set to earn one card pack. So challenges that can take 30 minutes can earn you one mediocre player. Oh, s Wow, that's, that's awesome. How much do I need to spend to get an average player in the 80s? What, $20? Yeah, no, I guess I'm not going to be playing this game mode anymore. I mean, for the sake of this video, I did play it just to do some research, but I'll be honest, until EA gets sued and is forced to change his game mode to not glorify gambling to kids, then this will never change. And unfortunately, something that had so much potential just falls to the wayside. And with the bad, we need to talk about the ugly. And unfortunately, like most games in the era of modern gaming, there are always glitches and problems that plague all games, even the ones that we love. And unfortunately, this game got hit with the same plague. The servers are absolutely broken, and there were several times this caused the game to crash or certain features to be unusable. When I first played Dynasty mode, I went full Neanderthal mode and set my Dynasty to be an online Dynasty. What am I kidding? Do I have friends to play online Dynasty with? No. But eh, who cares? It's not like it's going to matter. Well, since it's an online Dynasty, I need the servers to be connected to play it. So when I set my recruiting board, my schedules, ready for week one, I play as the Syracuse Orange taking on Duke. We have a literal ESPN classic back and forth game. I win the game in the final minute with a crazy two minute drive. Once I exit the game, I get a notice. Failed to connect the servers. Sends my dumbass back to the lobby and the entire game was unsaved, losing the stats and the victory. Now I did super sim the game and still got the W in the end, but then I thought, what happens if this was on a larger scale? And it actually was. So many people had lost saves, progress in their online based franchises, and even road to glory due to these server issues. This breaks so much fun that could be had with the game. And it just sucks. But Mars, you're being too hard on EA. It, the game just released. Well, I'll be honest. EA makes billions of dollars off the Ultimate Team and Madden games every year. They should have the money to ensure that servers work on release day. Even one of the most fun aspects that was created in Team Builder, where you can create your own school, won't allow me to save any team build I made because the servers are such trash. I made a literal Blue Mountain State College based on the TV show, and it won't save. I won't be able to be Thad Castle and clap some cheeks. These servers are broken, and for the love of everything, fix this crap now. Overall, this game has both positives and negatives. The overall gameplay experience and feel of College Football 25 is actually stunning, giving me the ultimate feeling of nostalgia from the past. I have been waiting more than a decade to get to play a college football game, and with this release, I finally had my prayers answered. Now, even with this game breaking records on day one with its crazy amount of purchases, the downsides do hurt my ass. The servers are completely broken, and there needs to be some real balancing updates to fix some of the glaring problems this game has. Ultimate Team will always be a money-grubbing trash system, but even with all this bullshit, the game does still shine. 
I'm giving College Football 25 an 8 out of 10. It's one of the best performing sports games I've played in a long time, and I have enjoyed most moments in my play of Dynasty Mode. There are some clear adjustments that need to be made, which clearly shows that this game is not perfect. But with the launch of College Football 25 landing this well, it does give me hope that with a future installment, the beloved College Football franchise has a bright future and will reign supreme above all sports games where it belongs. If you're interested on whether Sony can fix their FPS games problem, check out the most recent video in the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsband signing off. Peace out, guys.